Welcome to Babies and Bones. Click to subscribe below. Don't forget to like and comment. Your comments can guide us on what videos we make next. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate. And hi, I'm Dr. Nima. Today we're gonna to talk about developmental milestones in kids under the age of one. So I always hear people call my wife and ask about milestones. When should their kid be talking by or walking by? And it's a really hot topic. So we thought we'd review some of this with you guys today. I don't know much about that stuff. I only know some of the major milestones. Obviously my wife is the expert. All I remember from medical school are the four pillars, which are gross motor, fine motor, language, and social skills. So we're gonna go over the milestones now. We'll start with two months. So two months, Kate, what should kids be doing? Yeah, so when people are in the office, they are obviously this is the usually the biggest thing that they wanna talk about are milestones. Um, so two months, again, Nima mentioned it, we divide it up into gross motor, fine motor, language, and social, um, social skills. So for gross motor stuff with a baby at two months, they generally are holding their head up. So when parents are holding them, you always support the back of the head. But mm -hmm. at that age, kids are usually have pretty good neck control and they can hold up their head. Um, with their eyes, they'll start to track objects. So they can hold focus, usually with a parent's eye or like a cute little stuffed animal or toy. And they can hold focus and track just for a few moments. Um, Language-wise, they start to coo. So cooing are vowel sounds. So you hear like, ooh, ah, ooh, like stuff like that with little babies. So you'll start to hear a lot of cooing or vowel sounds um, around two months. Um, and then socially, you'll start to see a social smile. So before two months, babies will often smile. It's typically gas. Um, a lot of parents think they're smiling at them, which is fine. I always just am like, yeah, they're so cute. They're smiling at you, but it's typically gas. At two months is when you really have a social smile. So mom smiles at baby, baby smiles back at mom. Um, it's very cute and it's a lot of social bonding. Um, so that's two months. So what about four months? Yeah, so um, I generally skip three months because there's gonna be a lot of, um, there's a big range in all these developmental milestones. So we kind of just go to four, six. So at four months, um, again, gross motor skills. So at this point, the baby can hold their head very well unsupported. So if you have a child um, sitting on the floor, you'll see them very well. If they're on tummy time, very well be able to kind of hold up their head and move their head around. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I just think it's cute. <laughs> um, in terms of other gross motor things, if babies are on their tummy, they do something really well called a tri pod so you'll see them with their two hands in front of their stomach if they're doing tummy time and they'll be able to kind of prop up almost completely onto their elbows um, by four months um, in terms of other gross motor milestones some babies will start to roll actually yeah. at four months which we'll see um, we'll talk about that in a little bit our oldest did not do this until seven months no. but our little our second one did so starting around four months um, you'll start to see babies roll usually from their tummy onto their back mm -hmm. so that usually happens first because babies hopefully will be doing a lot of tummy time by this point um, and when they're on their tummy their head um, baby's heads weigh so much so much more than the rest of their body generally so if they're on their tummy and they're really holding up their head and then they kind of start to look either to the left or to the right their head usually kind of pulls them over and they flop over so it's not an intentional roll it's an unintentional roll starting at four months and usually it's with kind of the weight of their head helping them along um, but some kids will roll really well from front to back and back to front even as early as four months um, other things, so fine motor, kids' hands straight to the mouth by four months, everything. So they're chewing on the yeah. front of their hand, the fingers are in their mouth, like everything goes into their, goes into their mouth and actually makes contact. Um, and they, they do really well with finger sucking and things like that. Um, trying to think of what else. They laugh, right? Yeah, so that's social. So in the middle, I'm not just arm candy guys. Yeah, I know a little bit. <laughs> um, in terms of language, let's go back to language really well. Um, so instead of the cooing, you start to get a little bit of babbling at oh, four right. months. So the difference between cooing and babbling, as I said before, cooing are vowel sounds, babbling are more consonants. So you might get a little bit of like ba 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 or g g g g g around the four month mark. Um, some kids will do this a little later, but sometimes we hear it around four months. Um, and then our favorite, so around four months is when you get the giggle or the yeah. laugh, um, which is. Precious. Which is really fun. Yeah. It's a great moment when you kind of like tickle a baby and you get that first big belly laugh out of them. It's really, really, really sweet. And that's usually I tell parents to look forward to that around four months. Okay, so what about six months? So six months, moving on. Um, so by six months at this point, <clears throat> babies typically can roll really well front to back, back to front. Um, it's always the time I get the most phone calls about 
baby was in the middle of my California King and I went to the bathroom for 30 seconds and I came out and baby was on the floor. <laughs> um, it happens to a lot of people um, or they rolled off the couch. It's just, it happens unexpectedly. Um, so I always warn parents, be really careful between four and six months because that's when they're going to start rolling. That's a good one to know. Um, it's a big one. Um, sitting. So a lot of kids by six months can sit. Usually it's with assistance. So they start to sit and they're kind of like wobbling, wobbling, and then boom, they'll kind of hit, fall over and hit the floor. Yeah, we've seen that a few times. Um, happened a lot. <laughs> with both of our kids. Um, so it's sitting, but with assistance, they're not quite super steady by six months. Um, fine motor, they're really, um, they start to transfer objects. So if you have a block in a baby's hand, they can transfer it to one hand and then they're able to let go and transfer it to the other hand and hold on to it. Babies will grab things at a very early age. So you'll see them even at one month, two months, they'll be able to kind of like grab your finger and hold on really, really tight and it's super cute. Um, the act of letting go is the six month developmental milestone. So transferring an object, a baby has to hold an item, bring it to the other hand, let it go, and transfer it back from midline to the other side. So that's a six-month milestone. I never realized that one. I for, never realized that for one. For fine motor skills, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of language, it's just a better, more babbling. So if they weren't babbling at four months, they're starting to do the babbling or the, the, the more consonant sounds at six months. Again, that's a big spectrum. So if you have a six-month-old and you're not getting those really good ga, 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 do not worry at this point. It's okay. Um, but some people will start to see that. Um, and then social development. So at this age, kids are really good at distinguishing familiar faces from strangers so you might be holding your own baby and then you know a friend comes over who hasn't seen the baby in two months and then you know you transfer and they'll kind of look at you with these wide eyes they're not quite terrified because stranger anxiety really sets in closer to nine months but they definitely at that age are able to distinguish between people mm -hmm. okay sweetie, so what about nine months yeah. That's, that's when they get stranger danger, right? The stranger danger at nine months. Yeah. So this <laughs> is when um, if you have your child and you pass them off to a friend or a grandparent who hasn't been a around for a long time um, or a couple months, then, you know, as soon as you pass them off, that baby's going to start to cry. You're going to yeah. get a lot of those screams and stuff like that. And I always tell people, don't take it personally. It's fine. It's just that's part of their cognitive development, yeah. um, figuring out like where their safe place is and who's unfamiliar to them. Um, they also will find, like have a preference for a parent usually and become very clingy to that one parent. Um, and so, for example, like our one of our children or both of our children at one yeah. point would prefer me over Nima. Still to this day, <laughs> our three-year-old prefers her over me. <laughs> it's not true. It's a lose-lose for me. It's not true. Um, but going back to kind of gross motor. So gross motor at nine months. Um, so most babies at this point will be able to sit completely unassisted. So you won't kind of have those rocky um, motions when they're sitting. They'll be able to sit unsupported, very steady. Um, and then crawling. Oh, so yeah. crawling starts to happen at nine months. Not for every baby, but for a lot of babies, they'll start to crawl. Um, either like an army crawl that then will progress to kind of a crawl on all fours. They can also pull the stand, right? Yeah. So then the crawling will progress to a pull to stand. So a lot of kids will pull to stand on the edge of a couch or they'll pull up into a standing position on the edge of a coffee table yeah. um, and then the next after that they'll pull the stand and they'll start to do something called cruising and cruising is when they're holding on to the edge of a couch or holding on to the edge of a coffee table and kind of taking baby steps side to side holding on to something mm -hmm. um, and then the progression after that is the stand alone so they'll let go of the couch or they'll let go of the side of the coffee table and kind of just stand with their hands out looking around not ready to take a yeah. step just kind of trying to figure out where their balance is yeah that's always my favorite because you watch a child kind of go back and forth like this for two seconds and they fall flat on their butt and they're totally cute <laughs> but all of this as a reminder can happen starting at nine months or some kids will crawl even at eight months mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to happen there's no specific <clears throat> real timeline I've seen kids that will start to crawl at nine months or start to crawl at a year or they won't pull the stand until a year they won't cruise until you know even 13 months something like that so always talk to your pediatrician about it because there's a really yeah. really wide spectrum for what's considered normal um, for gross motor at this age mm -hmm. in terms of fine motor this is when kids are pretty good at pulling um, um, picking things up and bringing them to their mouth. So at nine months, there's something called an immature pincer. So I think of it as like a, like a lobster, a lobster claw. Um, <laughs> so they'll use their thumb, their opposing thumb, but then they'll also kind of like use all of their fingers to pick something up and bring it to their mouth. Uh -huh. So when kids are eating, they're eating solid food at this point, they're starting to pick up kind of like larger items and bring it to their mouth. And at nine months, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that's when our daughters always said dada first, right? <laughs> they both did say dada before mama. Um, so in terms of speech, so kids will start to say dada or mama, um, but it's non-specific. And so um, they, will, they will say dada to everyone, to like people in the supermarket and to their dads and to their moms and to grandparents. The I always tell parents, the dads, like he said, the baby said dad first. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. That's great. But the <laughs> d, d, d 
sound tends to be a lot easier than the ma ma ma. The M's are dif more difficult than the D. So often you'll see babies say da da before mama. That was my only victory, by the way, and she just stole it. She just literally. Uh, so that's <laughs> sorry. Um, they really did like you more at nine months, I think. Um, and then we covered uh, the social stuff with the stranger yeah, yeah. anxiety and the clinging to your favorite parent. So in the big one, one year, which I know is when they're supposed to walk. Well, supposed to, that's a strong statement. So right? um, yeah, most kids will take their first steps around okay. one year. Um, but again, this is a huge spectrum. So as I know you know, when we've gone to um, mommy and me or daddy and me classes, um, <laughs> or you've been at like a music class or to the park, you'll see 11 month old kids that are starting to walk. And so if you have, you know, at this point, a 12 month old or a 13 month old baby who's not walking, a lot of parents will come into my office and say, my kid's not walking yet, what do you think? I always just say, don't worry. My cutoff is 18 months. If I have a kid who's not walking by 18 months, then my ears perk, we talk about physical therapy and stuff like that. But again, there's a huge spectrum to when kids will figure this out. Some kids will crawl just straight up to 15 months and then they start to pull to stand and then they walk within a week. Wow. Um, and sometimes it's a lot, you know, it happens a lot earlier than that. So just talk to your pediatrician about it because <laughs> usually it's not something to worry about. Okay. Um, other big gross motor things. So like I mentioned before, some kids at this age will just learn how to stand alone. They'll start taking a few steps. Um, in terms of fine motor, they're getting a lot, it's a lot, um, their fine motor control is a lot more advanced. So now they do something called a mature pincer. Mature pincer is just a thumb and another finger as opposed to the immature pincer, which was kind of the whole lo lobster. The lobster claw. Lobster. Um, so now you'll see a little kid, like we used to you know, pick up a Cheerio <laughs> or pick up a puff or something like that from their high chair. Or in our case, blueberries for our children. For both of our kids, <laughs> blueberries that they love to pick up, exactly. You'll also see kids like start to dump things in containers. So they might have like a bunch of you know, blueberries or raisins or something that they'll start putting in mm -hmm. other, op in other little containers. Um, they'll throw things. They're really good at shaking rattles at this point, um, that type of thing. And they cry when you leave. I remember that one. Yeah. Right? So skipping to social <clears throat> stuff, like they really do not like when you leave the yeah. room. You could even just like go around the corner into a bathroom or laundry room and it's just full blown tears. Yeah. Um, at that point, they get really upset from a social perspective and then also lots, lots of preferences. So you'll see them if they want something from across the room, there's a lot of pointing and like because eh, 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 they can't quite have the name for what they want, but they make a lot of noises and they have a lot more preferences in terms of what they what they like and what they prefer. Um, and then what did we miss? We missed I think going back to language. So. Oh, yeah, so language. So now we see more of a mama data specific. So before it was da 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 to everybody. Now the da da is specific to dad. The mama tends to be specific to mom. And some kids will actually start to have a few words at once. So I'll have some kids that come into my office and they're about 12 months and they'll have five to 10 words at that point. Um, our one year old, Scarlett, she just turned one <laughs> last week um, and she says mama data and that's pretty much it. And that's okay. She doesn't have any other words. Um, our oldest, like she was pretty late to talk actually. She didn't have have really more than four words until like closer to 18 months. So again, huge she spectrum. She was also hearing two different languages all the time. She too. was, yeah, totally yeah. a different um, topic that we can cover in a different video. Um, but yeah, so language again, it's going to be on a huge spectrum. Some kids will have, you know, anywhere from five to 10 words at one year, um, 12 months of age, and some kids won't have a couple of words until a couple months later. Yeah. And that's, again, that's completely okay as long as you're talking to your pediatrician about it. Um, I think that's, th those are the big things from, Did you from get kind peekaboo? of. Zero to 12. Oh, peekaboo. We do a lot yeah. of peekaboo at 12 months. You're right. Yeah. So they love peekaboo at 12 months and also pat a cake. They love oh, yeah. doing like pat a cake. Although I feel like our daughter just started picking that up, our three year old. <laughs> a little delayed sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I think the point is, is uh, as my wife said, is that just because they're not right on time uh, based on what the book says doesn't mean that they're really behind. Talk to your pediatrician, find out. That you can find out that maybe this is normal to be a little bit like delayed. There's ranges. It's not just one specific time period. Yeah, and right? I don't even like talking <clears throat> about delayed or labeling it as that because yeah. it's really quite normal. Yeah. Some kids are very advanced from a gross motor skill perspective and their language lags. Or some kids are very, very verbal, but they're kind of just sitting there and looking at the books all day. And again, that's okay. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. Um, and usually everyone kind of catches, catches up. up yeah. yeah, it takes a little time. Yeah, so it's just important to know if you have any concerns call your pediatrician. The one thing that I know a lot of parents want to know, and I, this is what most people ask me to ask you actually, is when should they be worried? And I know you covered it. I think you mentioned it about walking. Yeah. But so, is there another, is there anything else that they should be worried about? Yeah. So I call them red flags, yeah. um, like hard red flags. So if you don't have any words by 18 months, to me, that's a hard red flag. If you don't have any 
like no ability to walk, no steps or anything by 18 months. To me, that's a hard red flag. Um, if you can't sit at all by nine months, that's a, that's a red flag to me. There's a couple of big ones. And again, they're going to be pediatrician specific, um, depending on what people, their experience you know, is and what, what the kind of the whole picture of the child is really important also. So if there's any concerns at all, the best thing to do is just to talk to your pediatrician who knows your child better than you know, yeah. the common person in the community. Well, I'm pretty sure that was probably really helpful for a lot of moms I and dads. I learned a lot right now. So um, I hope you guys all learned as much as I did. And this was a fun video for you. Um, and tune in again next time. Bye. Bye.